What if we could finally settle the debate? What if we could calculate once and for all who is the greatest Formula 1 driver of all time? We crunched the numbers, adjusted the rules and the results are in. And trust me, they are not what you might expect. This idea has been on my mind for a while now. How do we create a level playing field across the entire history of Formula 1? How do we account for different eras, different cars, different numbers of races? Of course, that's impossible, but I think we came pretty close. The solution we've come up with is a point system with consistency factor that treats every driver equally. Whether they race in 1950 or 2023, 2024, we apply this point system to every race and at the end calculated average points per race to adjust for number of races. Because, you know, in the past they drove like 7-8 races in a season. Now it's much more. The new point system goes as follows. P1 gets 20 points, P2 gets 19, P3 gets 18 and all the way down to P20 which still earns one point. So with this uh, system Every position matters and even the DNF would earn you points. For example, if you DNF in lap 1, you would be P20, still earning one point. And by making the difference in points for each position only one point, the dominance of the top teams is a little bit balanced out and the underdogs with worst cars still have a fighting chance because they are still earning points. Let's first run this point system chart uh, over every race since 1950 and seen the results of this and in the end we will adjust for the number of races to get the average points per race for each driver but with this new point system the results are surprising to say at least you'll see the usual suspects rise to the top but keep an eye out for those unexpected names who suddenly find themselves in the mix and hit the like button and subscribe if you like what we are doing here We'll be back in a minute. Let's enjoy the bar chart.
Okay, we are back and we have the results of the new point system applied throughout all races since 1950. As expected, the drivers with most races come out on top, but uh, see what happens if we divide the points won with the number of races they participated in. The result of that is in the graph on the right side and now the top 20 drivers look a lot different when sorted by average points won per race. Some of the drivers remained in about the same position like Hamilton and Schumacher, others like Alonso have significant drop, some like Prost and Verstappen have jumped up in the list. And uh, you can see the majority of the drivers from the left chart do not even show up in top 20 in the chart on the right. We can also see the position change from the left to right chart, so for example Fangio was 83rd on the left chart, but is first on the right one, so he gained 82 positions. Gonzalez and Von Trips have made even more impressive jumps, but I would take them out of the equation as they have uh, less than 30 races under their belt. Further, I would take out all the drivers in the left chart that didn't make it to top 20 in the right chart, which is, the, you see, the majority of them. And we can see on the right we still have 5 active drivers that are in the top 20 and can challenge Fangio's result. I doubt Hamilton and uh, Alonso can much improve their average points per race just because they have too many races under their belt and would need a lot more consistent podiums and wins to improve significantly the average points per race. But Verstappen, Leclerc and Norris still can improve their average and maybe one day become the greatest of all time. For now, with this system, Fangio keeps the title with Hamilton in a very close second. Let us know in the comments below what you think about this system and what are your conclusions from the results. And if you like this type of content, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. See you in the next one.